Welcome to Chalk Talk, Danville Public Schools Weekly News Magazine. I'm Diane Locker, your host. Earlier this year, we came to Galileo Magnet High School to talk to them about some of the national awards that they had been receiving. At the time that we did that show, at the end of the show, we found out that they had been named a Blue Ribbon School, and we mentioned it at that time. The significant thing about Galileo being named a Blue Ribbon School is they're the only high school in the state of Virginia that got the award for 2014. We thought that was important enough that we came back to Galileo High School because we want to spend time this week talking about that award and why Galileo was named. What we're going to do to kick off the show is we're going to have a conversation with the principal, Jay Lancaster, about the award and how it was, uh, came to Galileo Magnet High School. So come along with me now as I have a conversation with Mr. Lancaster. Jay, in the introduction to the show, one thing that I, I didn't say and that I think it's important that we say as we're talking about the Blue Ribbon is many times in, in our schools we have won a Blue Ribbon mostly at the elementary level. Yes. This is the first time that Danville Public Schools has been recognized as a Blue Ribbon High School. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am, it is. Also, I, and I have to say it again, not only the first time for us to have a high school, we are the only high school in the state. Now, it's my understanding when we talk about Blue Ribbon, it's a uh, part of the U.S. Department of Education. It's something that they do in conjunction with the Virginia Department of Education. Correct. You, is this something that you say, I want to be a Blue Ribbon school? How, does it, how did it come to you? Did you ask for it or did they ask you? The state has their criteria and Galileo had met their criteria and I was contacted, would I be willing to go through the application process? In other words, the state has all of your testing data and this is for 2014. And the years previous. Show a pattern. How many years? They had the year previous, then we were nominated, and then they had to wait for the data for the following year to come in. So in 2013, you were nominated based on what you had done in 2013 in testing, but you had to wait and to see if you met that same criteria in 2014? Yes, ma'am. And we were a 2014 National Blue Ribbon School. Now, when they look at this data and they say that they want you to be, and, and by the way, you were for an exemplary, how does that um, exemplary say? Exemplary high performing school. And that means, I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory. That means you had high test scores. Uh, it was three criteria and I'll read it just to make sure. Uh, the performance of all tested students in the school in the most recent year in English and mathematics must be in the top 15% of all schools in the state. Now, wait a minute. 15% of all, top 15% of all schools in the states, all high schools? Yes, all high schools. Okay. Uh, the second criteria for all our subgroups, which would be students with disabilities, economically challenged, uh, Hispanic, African-American students, all our tested students must be in the top 40% of all schools in each subgroup. Now, one of the things when I was reading about the Blue Ribbon Award said um, not only academic achievement, but kind of like closing the gap in uh, between subgroups. So they take that into consideration, even though you were in the top 40% on that aspect, but even though that's not your award, but they still looked at that? They look at that, and there's two separate awards that they give through the U.S. Department of Education. One is closing the, uh, the gap, and the other is for exemplary performance. And we received the exemplary performance. And then third uh, criteria is graduation rates from the top 15% in the state. I read, I think, and we talked about it in the show that we did previously, I think also you had earlier this year or last year something about your high school graduation rate, just a couple of schools in this area uh, had... Um, very high graduation rate. Uh, our school and one school in the county had the highest graduation rates in Southside, Virginia. All right, so the, the Virginia Department of Education looks over those three criteria based on what you did in 2013 and what you did in 2014. Correct. They submit that to 
the U.S. DOE. Now, did you, what about applications? Did you have to do a lot of that? It was a rigorous application. It was about 14 pages. We had to go through the history of our school, uh, the various uh, clubs because they want more than just academics. We talk about uh, our athletic programs, our school-based clubs, uh, the history of the school. We talk about our cr uh, curriculum and everything that makes us unique. Let's digress just a touch here and when you mentioned history of the school and talked um, a little bit about the history of the school. Now this school is a little bit um, unusual and different from other high schools. You're in what used to be I think Sears many, many years ago. So you're in a, a non-conventional building. You don't offer everything that, let's say, a large high school would offer. Would you consider yourself a, a mid-size, a small high school? We're a small high school, approximately 270 students. But you have a very um, targeted curriculum, let's, let's put it that way. Tell me a little bit about that curriculum. Uh, everything we offer is advanced, and uh, most of our electives are geared toward science, uh, computers, and networking. But you're also what we would call a school of choice. Correct. Uh, GW High School is Danville's uh, comprehensive high school. Uh, it, students automatically go to GW unless they choose to enroll at Galileo. So no one is, let's say, um, zoned into Galileo? No. Uh, Galileo is a school of choice. Uh, the registration process is getting ready to start for our eighth graders, and that's where the parents choose where they want their students to go to high school. You have something else going on here, too, um, beyond just concentrating on the sciences and everything, and, and, and uh, you have a very um, in-depth technology program, but you're also an international baccalaureate school. Yes, uh, the IB program's kind of our calling card. Um, the International Baccalaureate Program is a worldwide curriculum that we participate in, and our students are judged not only against students in the United States, but all over the globe. And I think in that program, I think we're going to talk a little bit later uh, the, uh, to the young lady that is, um, let's say, doing that program for you here at Galileo. I just wanted to put that part in there about the history because I think that this is a unique school and the history is unique too. And I think it's also what? It started in 2002? This is our 12th year. So you are, in terms of schools, and especially high schools, uh, a young school. Yes, very young. But this year, our cross-country team finished ninth in the state, uh, first place in the state yearbook. My Scholastic Bowl team just won first place in our conference, and we're headed to regionals. Uh, so we do more than just the academic piece. Uh, we've got our spring play coming up, uh, the line, the witch, and the wardrobe, that we perform for some of the other elementary schools in town. You have a very strong drama program here, um, and you mentioned um, a lot of times we think of Galileo and we don't think sports, but you've always had um, a fairly strong sports program in the areas that you participate in. We've had soccer for several years. Uh, cross country's fairly new. Uh, Coach Bryant and Nancy Schomer have done a great job, and only our second year we finished ninth in the state. A school your size, who who are you competing with, and and how did you, how did you become second in the state? If you're, do you compete the same as let's say uh, George Washington High School would? We do. We're just in a different classification. Uh, the Virginia High School League classifies all schools. Uh, there's over 300 high schools, and they're broken up into six classifications. So we compete at the single A level against roughly the lowest, the smallest 40 schools in the state. Now, you have international baccalaureate, but don't you also have advanced placement classes, what we call AP classes? You're offering everything in that line that any other high school would offer, but you're the only high school in this area offering international baccalaureate. Yes, Is that only, correct? The only school in the region. And uh, we have AP and dual enrollment and governor school and the engineering academy, but some of those offerings are limited just because of our size. Let's go back now to, to Blue Ribbon. Uh, you've won Blue Ribbon. Uh, you're the only one in the state that is a high school Blue Ribbon school. How many schools total got awards this year, including middle, high, and elementary? There was 337 schools nationally. Uh, there were only 48 high schools, so we're one of 48 high schools in the nation. Um, the that's, very, that's very significant. I mean, you can say one of 48 high schools in the nation. I can only imagine how many high schools are in this nation. 
There are over 100,000 schools total. Uh, the U.S. Secretary of Education, Arne Duncan, was talking to us, and he said basically this award puts you in three-tenths of 1% of all schools in the nation. Three-tenths of 1% of all schools or all, all high schools? All schools in the nation, and that also includes the U.S. Armed Forces schools around the globe because there were several schools from Japan and Germany that earned National Blue Ribbon through the U.S. Armed Forces. That's that's very significant, very significant, Once and in a we don't we don't think about that here in Danville. I mean, to get that type of recognition for for this school. Yes, and he went on to talk about how important it is to a community. Uh, it's been proven blue ribbon schools actually increase property values. Uh, it increases uh, attractability of enterprises and businesses. So this is a, an award for Danville Public Schools that will reach out into the community. I think a lot of times in the community, if, if people don't have children in school, they forget how important schools are to them, whether they have students in school or not, because it's, a, it's part of our um, recruiting of businesses and everything else. And this is second year in a row Danville Public Schools has had a Blue Ribbon School. Last year, Forest Hills Elementary had earned this award and then this year. So in Danville Public Schools, that's two years in a row that we've had schools that rank in the top 1% of all schools in the nation. Very, very much so. You've got this blue ribbon. What are some of the things that have happened? I know one thing, we have this beautiful plaque here that you received um, about being a um, blue ribbon school, more important, Bluebell ice cream came in, I believe. Tell me a little bit about that. They did a tremendous service to my students. They offered to come in and give the students ice cream free of charge, um, just to uh, congratulate them. So right before Christmas, we had uh, Bluebell ice cream served to all the school, I mean, all my students and staff. How did they know? Are they connected with the uh, Department of Education on this blue ribbon? Um? No, they said uh, they saw the press release and that we were a Blue Ribbon School and their district uh, manager wanted to make sure that we were recognized. That's neat, that, that's very neat. Also, I think this is nice, so this is something that you did. It's a pin. Yes, it's a little pill pin that I bought for Christmas presents for all my faculty and staff. I want them to realize that this is a once in a lifetime award and just a little memento and then plus as they go out into meetings and in the community to show off that uh, Galileo is a blue school. We've had many awards here. When we were at the show that I talked about that we did earlier this year, you received some national recognition, I think, from some of the um, US magazines. News and uh, Washington Post, uh, Daily Beast, and um, Newsweek. We've been ranked in the top 2,000 most rigorous high schools in America. Those awards, this blue ribbon, though, is a little bit different, isn't it? I mean, as far as recognition, I think people in the community recognize the concept of um, Blue Ribbon Schools. And, and I read that w they've been doing this, the U.S. Department of Education has been doing this since 1982. I believe so, yes, ma'am. And only 7,000, a little less than 8,000 schools in the history of this program have won it. And you can't win this award within a five-year cycle. So it's not the same number of schools winning the awards continuously. And matter of fact, I believe West Point High School in 2012 was the last high school in Virginia to win this award. So nobody in the state of Virginia won it last year at the high school level. When you throw out things like 7,000 since 1982, once again, I have to say, remember how many schools there are in the nation. And 7,000 is a very small number. When you put it in that context. There's roughly 37,000 public and private high schools in the nation. Wow, that doesn't count all the elementary and middle and everything. Over 100,000 schools K through 12 in the nation. You can only win this within, did you say a five-year? A five-year window. Uh, Galileo plans to accept this again in 2019 uh, is our plan. <laughs> we'll come back if I'm still here. <laughs> What we're going to do now is we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, I'd like for you to get um, Mrs. Shanks in here yeah, and, and your IB coordinator and talk a little bit about IB, but also you said to me earlier the um, awards banquet or whatever it was that you went to was a little bit different, and I'm going to get you to explain to the community why it was different. Okay. Be sure to come back after the break and hear more about 
this blue ribbon school, the only one in the state of Virginia. Having devices in my classroom helps foster an engaging atmosphere for my students. They're having to get a topic, research the topic, and then create an assignment using that topic. The students are more engaged on the devices because they're having to work in a collaborative group. They're having to research a topic and then create something for that assignment. Danville Public Schools wants our students to be on the cutting edge of technology as we prepare our students for an ever-changing economy. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we're at Galileo Magnet High School and we're here for a very important reason. Galileo Magnet High School was named as a Blue Ribbon High School in 2014. And not only were they named, they were the only one in the state of Virginia, the only high school in the state of Virginia. In the first half of the show, I had a conversation with uh, Mr. Lancaster here about the Blue Ribbon Program. While we were talking about that, we mentioned the International Baccalaureate Program. So what we're going to do in the second half of the show, we've brought Kathy Shanks in with us because she's the IB coordinator to find out a little bit more about the IB program. We talked about the fact that we have a concentration on sciences and technology here, but we're also the only school in the region that has the International Baccalaureate Program at the high school level. Now, Kathy, when I say at the high school level, uh, we used to have a middle school program. Do we have that middle uh, years program anymore? No, we do not. We just have the diploma program now. Now, that means that if I am a sophomore here at Galileo, I decide I'm going to take courses, I decide I'm going to go for a diploma. How does it work? Um, we like to identify students earlier than 10th grade because there are some schedule adjustments we need to make before they get in 10th grade. Normally, though, we can work around those adjustments if we haven't identified a student. But um, you, we have a small application process. The students have to complete what we call a 10th grade project to let us know that they are sincere uh, about the whole applica application process. Now that 10th grade project, what's that? didn't that used to be part of the middle years program? It did, but since we are no longer um, a middle year school, we just sort of renamed it and tweaked it a little as far as the requirements uh, that we have now compared to the requirements that IB had for the same project or similar project. I said in the opening to the show that we had been here earlier this year to talk about awards that, that you had received. We spent some time in an um, IB classroom, and I was so impressed with some of the students that we talked with that every student, I think, that I talked with, and that if memory serves me correctly, said they were in that IB program because it was rigorous. Mm -hmm. They wanted the rigor, and that's not something that we generally think students are looking for. Right. Um, I think because they uh, correspond with students who've been through the diploma program and they realize the advantages that those students have once they get to college, um, they're sort of in this attitude, well, let's bring it on. Let's, let's do this. They know what the benefits will be uh, once they get into college. Now, I think we talked years ago, you and I talked about the International Baccalaureate Program, and we also had some of our graduate students that had graduated gone on to college mm -hmm. that came back. And the one thing they said was they felt like they were ahead when they got there because of the training that our teachers get to teach in the International Baccalaureate Program, they taught more at a college level. Right. Um, one of my favorite stories is uh, one that a student uh, tells every time I still see her, she went to UVA and she said her first year at UVA was actually easier for her than her senior year here in the IB program. So um, we take that as a compliment to our <laughs> teachers and they, they work extremely hard and the students work extremely hard too. Now I think another, one other point that I think is important about the International Baccalaureate Program, people might say, oh yeah, you do great in the International Baccalaureate Program, you know, you've got the whole thing here. It's very important for them to realize that we don't grade our own test. Right. Our test in the International Baccalaureate Program are sent to other countries right. to be graded mm -hmm. as we grade theirs. Right. Uh, the teachers actually grade um, the work that is presented in class. But as far as the IB exams, and there are three exams for history, three for biology, um, two for English, so they sit for a lot of exams. But those exams are, in most instances, sent 
out of the United States to be graded by people that we don't know and cannot yeah, ask course. about, even if it, there's a rule we don't share with the students or teachers or parents who these um, scorers are. Now, depending on the score that you get, most universities and colleges accept that, and you can kind of like skip over some classes mm -hmm. or get credit for a college. Right. Mm -hmm. It depends on your score. The IB uh, scores are uh, given a score of one to seven, seven being the highest. So it depends on your score, and it, it varies among the colleges too. Um, some colleges give credit for fours, some uh, expect fives or sixes. Uh, now, Jay, how, how much do you think the International Baccalaureate Program played in becoming a Blue Ribbon High School? Since we try to prepare all our students to have that opportunity, their junior, senior year, that trickles down to our ninth graders to get that same level of expectation and rigor that our juniors and seniors do. So we don't distinguish between who we think is going to be an IB student. We try to prepare all our ninth graders to have that opportunity down the road. Well, when, when the state of Virginia looks at, at your scores and things like that, do they give you a bump up because you're an IB school or anything like that? No. So it, it, that had nothing to do with it. It's just a, one of those good things that we have going here. It's that foundation so that we can prepare the students that choose to go into IB uh, to be prepared that same level of preparation. You know, as they say, a rising tide lifts all ships, you know, sure. by raising the expectations for everybody. You know, not only do our IB students benefit, but so does the school at large. One of the things I mentioned when we came back from the break is that we were going to talk a little bit. You told me that the, I think there's a ceremony in November where they have all of the awards people come in from all of the states. And you said to me it was a little different than what you had expected. Uh, you want to tell me a little bit about very, that? Very different. Uh, you would expect something by the U.S. Department of Education to be very formal. But uh, it was a, about a three and a half, four hour party. People sung and danced and they played music and uh, we started with uh, Alabama and Alaska and went all the way through Wyoming and all 337 schools uh, went up, uh, accepted their award. So it was very, very entertaining. He said party. Did you think it was a party? Um, it was a party-like atmosphere. Okay. I will put it like that. Everybody was happy. Everyone was celebrating, but uh, I mean, there was no food or drinks or anything like that. Uh, very hot, I might add, to. And of course, with us being Virginia, we were um, one of the last uh, to get our award. But it was very nice. But uh, everybody was having a good time. And it was wonderful getting to meet um, um, some of the dignitaries who were there. And uh, some speakers from all over uh, the United States were there. It was, it was nice. Now, you're going to receive some type of recognition in a flag or something like that. How, what happens there? Uh, well, we do have our National Blue Ribbon flag that we're able to fly, and then we have our uh, plaque from the U.S. Department of Education, and plus we get to use the Blue Ribbon symbol for the year 2014 and all our mailings and websites. So whenever you see the National Blue Ribbon logo, you know, that tells you we're top 1% of all schools in the nation. Let me ask you something. When you say you're a Blue Ribbon school, are you allowed to say you're a Blue Ribbon school through this year, or can you say from now on you're a Blue Ribbon school? From now on, we can say we were a National Blue Ribbon school in 2014. I think I want to first say congratulations Thank to you. you. Congratulations to you on the work that you do in the International Baccalaureate Program, because even if they didn't give you extra points for that they should have um, it's a it's a wonderful program and one that um, we have the only one in the region at the high school level and, and we received this award for one reason our tremendous faculty across the board is the reason why our students get the great education and as i mentioned before they prepare them early you know forest hills is the national blue ribbon school the middle schools and the uh, other elementary schools in the region send us students that are truly ready. So this isn't just Galileo, but, you know, it's Danville Public Schools. And the truth is our students that come to us from the middle schools are more prepared than a lot of the other students that we receive. So Danville Public Schools is a blue school system doing a tremendous job. I think also um, you have to, this, the students, they're, they're very important in this too because this is a school of choice. And you know when you choose to go to this school, you know 
what you're going, what you want to do. You're not going to be a football player or march in the band or anything like that, but you're going to get that very excellent um, academic program that you have. And you are to be congratulated, your staff's to be congratulated, all of your students also. Yes, they've done a tremendous job. I want to thank you for letting me interrupt your day today. And um, it's wonderful to be able to be here and talk about this because back in 2002, I was one of the people that started this school, so I have to take credit. It, this, is, this is my place. This is my place. And I'm so glad to see that you've carried it on and done the wonderful job you've done with this school. Yes. Uh, uh, again, tremendous faculty makes it easy. I want to thank all of you for joining us this, this week, and I want you to be as proud as we are to have this school, to have this school recognized not only as a blue ribbon school, the only one in the state of Virginia, the only high school in the state of Virginia. Many awards come to the school besides this, and they come to the school because it's an excellent school. We are proud to have them in Danville Public School, and I know you're proud to have them in this community. Thanks for being with us this week, and we look forward to you coming back next week to find out what's going on in Danville Public Schools.